Sonic co-creator Yuji Naka is so far not happy with the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. But why is that? We'll be discussing that in today's video, as well as echidnas in the Sonic movie? Alright then, I don't know how I didn't spot that before. So sit back, relax, subscribe, here we go. Once again, this video is sponsored by NordVPN and you can get four months free with a three year subscription by using my discount code. Everything you need is in the description below, so check it out. Alright, onwards. Sonic the Hedgehog co-creator Yuji Naka has been pretty vocal over Twitter with his disapproval of the Sonic the Hedgehog movie so far. Although you might not immediately know it as they're all in Japanese. Fortunately for all of us, there are some really talented multilingual people who've been able to help us out. So what's on Naka-san's mind this time? Baby Sonic? Is this the mystery of Sonic's birth? I wanted Hollywood to make Sonic cool, but they show lots of cute sides and it's a pity. The movie could have been a perfect opportunity. I wonder if this kind of advertisement is Japanese exclusive. So Yuji Naka seems to be pretty concerned with how Sonic the Hedgehog is being represented in this movie. And it is true that until recently, Sonic was never intended to be a cutesy character. Despite, well, being kind of cute, I guess. Until recently, Sonic has always been about summarizing everything cool and radical about the times he's in. In the 90s, he was the rad dude with the attitude, who was all about taking down the establishment and the oppressive forces of Dr. Robotnik. In the early 2000s, he was all about action, high-flying set pieces, truck chases, rock music, grinding, and soap shoes. Heck, even Sonic 06 kinda keeps in line with that, in placing Sonic in this mythical blockbuster epic, where he battles it out with the Sonic equivalent of Satan. And this was the final game that Yuji Naka worked on. Since then, Sonic's whole focus has shifted more to nostalgia, and trying to appeal not just to the cool radical rebel kids, but to basically all kids. So Naka-san, I'd be extremely grateful if you'd step up and do something about that in the games as well. The thing is, I think a lot of these cool sides that Yuji Naka is talking about have been showcased in the Sonic movie trailers and promos so far. We've had him refer to himself as a little ball of super energy in an extremely handsome package. We've seen him playing with nunchucks, playing baseball with himself. These are all very Sonic things. The thing is that whole I'm cool and I know it attitude is something that did die with the 90s. And nowadays, it's just kind of ironically in the other direction. The thing is, it is difficult to make Sonic the Hedgehog work. Evidently, even in video games. When you've got a character that is 100% focused on being cool, and the definition of cool keeps changing, it's a struggle to keep that character relevant, as showcased incredibly evidently in some of Sonic's misfires, such as Sonic Forces, which tries to keep Sonic relevant by placing him in a larger-than-life war story, even though the character of Sonic has not been adjusted to work with that. So overall, everything just feels unnatural. It's a hard line to walk between pandering and just getting it right. The Sonic movie is trying to cater to as large of an audience as possible, and it is a Hollywood adaptation. Right, so what is one of the biggest things people are talking about regarding Hollywood right now? What's in? Nostalgia and babies. Not disgusting human babies, but group babies, Yoda babies. Right now in Hollywood, cute is cool. And I think in this day and age, a Sonic the Hedgehog movie would be a hard sell any other way. The first trailer we ever got for this film had Gangster's Paradise as the music and everybody scoffed. It is very difficult to market Sonic as the coolest thing in the world these days, especially when the character is still doing their best to just stay relevant at this stage. And I'm saying this as a guy that absolutely absolutely loves Sonic the Hedgehog. The thing is, when catering to Sonic the Hedgehog fans, be it through YouTube or other media like that, they can afford to just treat Sonic for what he is because it's the fans that will be watching those. They're not aiming for mega bucks in making this, they're aiming for promotion. They're aiming to keep the people that are enjoying games like Sonic Mania to continue enjoying Sonic Mania. Sonic's social media feeds have been keeping Sonic relevant by just keeping our eyes on Sonic, with music 
music remixes featuring T. Lopes, which only makes sense as a lot of people consider the music to be the very best thing about Sonic, as well as animated shorts by Tyson Hess, and of course a massive animation team. These things are very much designed to cater to the fans in the way that the film will not. A film is expensive to make, so you need to aim it for the largest audience possible. And naturally a film like Sonic the Hedgehog is a hard sell because A, it's a video game movie, these things are rarely loved, and B, it's another effort to keep a character that's struggling for relevancy outside of his niche relevant. They can't afford to not be broad about this, therefore they can't afford to have Sonic be super cool and super radical in accordance to what Sonic was in the 90s. So this film is going to need to showcase things that people are subscribing to these days. That means cute imagery, an adorable baby version of the main character, broad nostalgia, and probably floss dancing sadly. Guys really, it's a kid's movie in 2020, it's inevitable. Don't hold it against it, just cringe when you see it and move on. Broad audience, the highest possible number of people are not going to care about the Chaos Emeralds. They're not going to care about Shadow the Hedgehog. They're not going to care about the Flickies. They're not going to care about the Freedom Fighters or the Archie comics or the lore that goes with Sonic or classic and modern Sonic's distinction. And while I do think they could afford his inclusion as just a best friend for Sonic, the audiences probably aren't going to care about Tails either. So they can't exactly wear things like this on their sleeve for the advertisement if by any capacity any of that is in the film, which is highly unlikely. I mean, put it this way, Paramount Pictures didn't even think modern audiences cared about Sonic's appearance. They may have gone too far in a few places. And Yuji Naka was pretty vocal about how much he hated the original Sonic movie design, especially the hands. And he was absolutely right for that. Now guys, before you judge Yuji Naka and say, oh, be grateful your characters get in a movie in the first place. Like with everything that I've said in mind, we've got to understand that Sonic is kind of this guy's baby, as well as the baby of the co-creators Naoto Oshima and Hirokazu Yasuhara. Sorry, pronunciation is difficult as well as that I got a bit of a Christmas cold so I sound kind of disgusting anyway, but at least it waited until after the 25th, so that's certainly something. When having a character you created adapted into film, there's probably some hardship that comes with it, because with all adaptations comes changes, and you yourself would have a very specific attachment to that character, a very specific image in mind of what they are supposed to be and who they are, and you kind of just want that to be treated for what it is, you know? So for Yuji Naka, when Paramount Pictures comes along and kind of changes the outlook of Sonic the Hedgehog, sticks him in the real world, detaches both of his eyes, which yes, Yuji Naka did have a bit of an issue with, in spite of overall appreciating the redesign, and then you gotta watch your baby inevitably floss on screen to cater to modern audiences, there's gonna be a little feeling of, was my version not good enough? Would a lot of people not like my version? Would people really dislike Sonic that much that it has to be changed to this degree? And while obviously film is film and games are games and Yuji Naka's vision is gonna differ from the vision of Tim Miller and Jeff Fowler, we can't just treat people like Yuji Naka as like creative robots and they're getting paid royalties fixes all that. People are gonna have an emotional response to this kind of stuff. Having money in the bank isn't gonna change a feeling of inadequacy. I'm hoping that when Yuji Naka finally sees the film though that he feels reassured by it. That maybe everything works out and he's pleased by it. As it is, I don't suspect at all that Baby Sonic will have a big role in this film. And that is just how films are to be honest. I mean look at every single Disney princess film post Princess and the Frog. Literally every one of them starts with the princess as a toddler. It's just a thing that happens, like we see people grow up in movies these days. Whether it's necessary or not, whether you like it or not. I will say I like how Yuji Naka refers to it as the mystery of Sonic's birth. I mean, yeah, it's kind of a mystery. We've never seen his parents in the games or any of his ancestors. But to be fair, same goes for Tails and Knuckles and Dr. Robotnik. Because the thing is, their births and their childhoods aren't really relevant. But perhaps the film is gonna make that relevant. Which brings me to the next part of the topic. In the Sonic movie, Sonic came to our world for a reason. People will not leave him alone and keep trying to steal his power. And this baby Sonic teaser trailer sure seems to suggest who's trying to do it and how long this has been going on. I didn't talk about this in my previous video about baby Sonic because I didn't notice it because I was distracted by baby Sonic. But I think we have some idea now of who's trying to steal his power. It's honestly almost kind of creepy how these things reveal themselves when you look closer. As up in the trees behind baby Sonic are these guys with bows and arrows, pointing 
looking at Baby Sonic. And it must be said, these guys look a lot like Echidnas. Perhaps the Echidna tribe? I don't think we'll be going too far in depth about who these people are, and I can't imagine that these are the exact Echidnas from Sonic Adventure 1 with the same backstory. Obviously, it's a big part of the story that Sonic left his home world to come to Earth because people wanted his power, and I think what happened was they like took an opportunity to make them Echidna tribe members. They took the opportunity to incorporate one more species from the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise as kind of a means to an end, so I'm gonna say this, don't get excited about Echidnas in this movie, or them playing any kind of massive role in there, or seeing your favorite Echidna from the Archie comics. But I mean, it's one more animal in this film than I was expecting. We can't truly tell if these guys are Echidnas or not, but they certainly look like it. But dude, aiming a bow and arrow at a baby? Yikes, I can see why Sonic wanted to leave this place. That's pretty fucked up. But okay, question time. I guess Sonic is still in his own world because the Echidnas are there, and this I guess is just like a log cabin in the Green Hill Zone or something. Who is Sonic presenting this flower to? Is Sonic gonna have parents in this movie? Is this a place of refuge and Sonic is presenting it as an offering to stay there? No, it's not Amy. Well, what do you guys think? Comment below and discuss, and as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the like button, and in the description below are links to my patron. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and have a great day. That's a cute outfit. Did your husband give it to you? because you could get a way better costume from Zentai Zone. Check out their range of custom-made, tailored superhero costumes. Ridiculously good quality, value, and customization. Link is in the description below, as well as my coupon code channel pup, where you can get a discount off of your purchase. And while you're at it, why not get your suit designed by my talented buddy Dan from New Blood Dan's Workshop? You can contact him via the link in the description below. Seriously, guys, you do not want to miss out on your chance to be your favorite superhero and feel authentic and professional. And you don't want to miss out on that Channel Pup discount.